So check it out, boo-boo. In the last video that I posted, I had someone leave a comment. I'm gonna read that to you because I want you to know the context of this video before we get started. And what I think you're the best in hair care and your teaching is amazing, but I'm going to have to unsubscribe from you because you give absolutely no advice or guidance on relaxed hair. We are still out here and need advice from awesome stylists like you. I'm just going to try on my own to get my hair healthy and keep it on my head. Hugs and kisses. To that comment, I have two things to say. Number one, as an educator, I love your compliment sandwich. That was good work. Number two, you are absolutely right, boo. Then I'm gonna give you 25 amazing tips on how to better care for your relaxed hair. But before we get into any of that, I just want you to know for those that are brand new, my name is Linwood. I'm a licensed cosmetologist and a cosmetology instructor, and I just touched the mic. I'm sorry, we gotta go back to the ASMR or something because I keep on slamming on the mic. I keep forgetting that I'm bougie now. I got a mic. I'm sorry. I have been doing this for Lord over two decades. We're not gonna get into the specifics because he's old and dusty. He just looks good because he moisturizes. I create hair care content like this here. So if you find that interesting, please feel free to subscribe. Number one, I'm just gonna be deep conditioning. A lot of times I see people where they feel like when they're going from relaxed to natural, that they need to be deep conditioning even more so because they're natural now and that hair needs moisture, it needs hydration, it needs all the things. But I'll be quite honest with you. Relaxed hair is natural hair that was sent through a caustic chemical process and now has a higher pH. So as a result of that, that higher pH, those cuticles are now wider open, there's gaps, there's pieces missing, and you're gonna need more frequent deep conditioning to keep better hydration. You're gonna need more frequent conditioning for protein loss and things like that that's happening during that chemical process or just during standard styling. And you wanna ensure that you are regularly deep conditioning to keep that hair as healthy as possible. Make sure that you're regularly deep conditioning at least once every two weeks with relaxed hair is a good way to go. You can do so with a steamer like this here for at home use. Salon steamers are fantastic as well. If you don't have one of those, which by the way, I have most of the things I'm gonna show you today linked with my favorite products in the description box and the top pin comment. If you don't have one of those, you can use a hooded dryer like this here. Um, this one's one of the stand up ones, not one of the tabletop ones, but they both do the same thing. I just like the stand up ones better because they fit over the chairs. So utilizing one of those tools for deep conditioning is gonna be fantastic for you and helps to ensure that you are pushing that hydration and pushing that protein deeper into the hair. When you are utilizing things like that, you wanna be deep conditioning with a moisture mask and deep conditioning with some protein as well. You can mix those two together. Again, products will be linked in my uh, description box and my top hand comment down below. And you wanna focus more on hydration a little less on protein, but because you're suffering protein loss due to the chemical that you have, you do wanna always have a little bit of protein in your mixture. And yes, you can mix those together. You don't have to deep condition with one and then rinse out and deep condition with another. You can cocktail that and get both things that you need. When it comes to protein, when in doubt, see a professional. You can do a lot of damage if you don't know what you're doing with protein and you overdo it. Protein overload is really difficult to fix. It takes a ton of time and a ton of hydration to balance out. That being said, if you're in any way, I don't really know, go see a professional, baby. It. Don't do it on your own. Number two, watch your temperature. Turn everything down. You don't need as much heat on your hair. Your hair has already been chemically altered to be a bit looser in coil pattern and things like that. And as a result, you don't need the same level or intensity of heat that you had before in order to do that. And you really shouldn't be focusing on a ton of extreme heat use in terms of a ton of frequency around heat and things like that either. I'll tell you this straight up. If you have relaxed hair, you should be nowhere near 400 degrees. Stay away from her. I would say three. 350 max and if you have fine relaxed hair go even lower i'm talking no higher than say 320 310 it's just relaxed hair has already been through enough it's already suffered a good degree of protein loss and if you're using a high degree of heat on there that hair even though it's already straight can still suffer heat damage can still suffer from your hair being burned it can cause hat hair to dry out it can lead to breakage lead to more split ends and a lot of times when you see people where their hair is relaxed and it's really stiff it's because that hydration is not where it needs to be or because there's too frequent use of heat, incorrect application of the chemical, all sorts of different things. And we're gonna talk about all of those factors today. Number three, watch your frequency. I don't mean heat this time. I mean in terms of the frequency that you're getting this chemical reapplied. A lot of times when you look on the back of a box for a relaxer or you just listen to a professional, they'll tell you, you need to relax your hair every six to eight weeks if you're wearing a relaxer. Let me give you the low down, the nitty gritty, the dirty truth on all of this here. Six to eight weeks is the minimum window, not the maximum window. And I've heard some people where they're just like, well, if you don't relax it that often, it's going to break off. If you're not properly caring for it, sure. But if you're keeping that hair well hydrated and your protein balance is where it needs to be, you can stretch so much longer than that. Majority of my clientele, I stretched them between 12 and 15 weeks. I had some that I would see once every six months 
to get their relaxers done. A lot of times people feel like there's no way I can possibly do that. My roots are too tight. I can't manage that. And I'll tell you now, if you're feeling like your scalp area is too tight, or like you can't comb through it, things like that, it's not that your coil pattern is that tight. Usually it's that your hair is that dry or you're sweating in your hair. You need additional hydration, not just for the relaxed hair, but still for the, the new growth that's growing out, especially if you're sweating. That's what causes it to feel more like I can't get through this hair, it's painful to detangle, things like that. So if you're noticing those factors, I would highly encourage you to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I'm not talking about oils here. I'm talking about deep conditioning. I'm talking about steaming. I'm talking about hydrating moisturizers, things like that with quality product because quality product is so key. You cannot put your hair through a tragic experience like that and then be like, you know what? Let me go ahead and go use VO5, Suave, White Rain, the stuff that's strictly getting your hair clean but isn't really providing a ton of conditioning ability to the hair. By the way, if you're finding value in, in any of these tips, please click the like button as well as if you notice there are any tips that you've never heard anyone give before in a space of relaxed hair, do me a favor and let me know which tips resonated with you most in the comments because I'm going to tell you now, with 25 tips, there's bound to be some you haven't heard before. Number four, never, ever, 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 ever overlap relaxer. Um, I really don't recommend doing relaxer yourself because you can't see the back of your head. Timing is a huge factor and there's so many things that can go wrong without a proper education in there. But even when you're getting it done by a professional, you should not see them pulling relaxer over onto hair that has already been relaxed. That hair should already be straight or smooth. You don't want to go through and pull that all the way through onto that hair. You're going to cause more of a breakdown on that hair than's needed or you're going to cause weak spots in the hair where they're prone to breakage as they get longer. So when you see that person that has relaxed hair that doesn't grow past the shoulders, I want you to keep in mind that a lot of times if you're noticing it doesn't grow past the collar or doesn't grow past the shoulders, it's usually because there's weak spots in the hair and it's dry. It's hitting something that's the thirsty fabric and that additional friction is causing it to break off. Hair that has already been treated does not need to be treated again. If you're feeling like, well, my hair is reverting, it's not acting right, all that, there's a good chance that you're using a calcium hydroxide relaxer. You probably had buildup on there. You would need a sodium hydroxide relaxer. I get that the calcium hydroxide relaxer are usually ones that are sensitive scalp, say that they're better for the hair, they're safer for kids, all that. They're not. They're formulated to be less stimulating to the scalp, but they're in no way better for the hair. And they do leave a calcium buildup that is really difficult to get off. And usually you do have to run a sodium hydroxide over that just to get the calcium buildup off of the hair. I stay away from sensitive scalp relaxers at all costs in my instance, because I know what I'm doing. There are several stylists that simply don't know the downside of calcium hydroxide relaxers or sensitive scalp relaxers or some stylists where they prefer to work with a sensitive scalp relaxer that's a lithium guanidine relaxer that is not going to leave the buildup on the hair and still smooths the hair out so that's an option as well either way it goes you should not be overlapping that hair so if you've already got hair that is chemically treated there you don't want to throw relaxer over that portion only the area that has newly grown from the scalp should be treated with that chemical number five you should not be trying to get your hair bone straight with relaxer keep in mind the name of it is relaxer its intention is to relax the curl not to remove the curl. So this is not just a straightening treatment. This is something that is meant to lessen the tightness of your curl. If you are one where you have curly hair, things like that, you're not looking for that hair to be bone straight, suck your head. If you are utilizing a relaxer and you've removed all of the curl, you've also removed all that hair's integrity, all of its strength, all of its tensile strength, and now it's that much more prone to breakage, to overprocessing, to dryness, to damage in general, and you're not really gonna see a ton of retention on your length. You wanna still leave some texture to that hair. Keep in mind, you're still gonna turn around and put heat on this. You're still gonna be turning around and regularly styling this hair. If I take everything out, it cannot take daily styling and still maintain the level of health that it needs to. And it's gonna be more prone to tangling. It's gonna be much thinner. It's gonna be breaking like crazy. It'll be see-through on the ends. And you end up like that person where it's like, I can tell which side you're sleeping on because that side is shorter, all that. Those are usually factors of hair that is over-processed. So just bear in mind, that's a really important factor that you want to be aware of. Just focus on the good stuff there, boo-boo. Number six, and once I get past 10, I'm not gonna be showing fingers because honestly, I'm not putting toes on the screen. We're not going to do that. Hey, not today. You got to pay to see the feet. And I don't have an OnlyFans, so <laughs> don't ask. Number six, scalp health matters. Always base your scalp very well before any sort of chemical relaxer is being done. Keep in mind, there is no such thing as a no base relaxer. There are relaxers that are marketed as no base relaxers, especially if they're sensitive scalp. But bear in mind, relaxer is not for your scalp at all. It's not for the skin at all. 
this is for the hair. And a lot of the issues that you're seeing now where people are like, well, what about these lawsuits that are happening with relaxers? And what about this propensity towards causing health issues and things like that? You have to keep in mind, if we are causing openings, raw spots, or eating through skin, um, because it's a very caustic chemical, that's going to be an issue. Uh, same thing happens if you're using Nair or Veet or something like that, and it burns you. It's entering the bloodstream uh, because you've now caused the skin to be raw. By the way, Nair and Veet are the exact same chemical as relaxer. They just have less, less buffering agents in them, so they remove the hair instead of just straightening the hair. So if you see these people online that are doing some foolishness where they're over here, like, I relax my hair with Nair, you should do it. You should not. Let me catch you in these streets doing some foolishness like that, babe. I will backflip all the way across the store and slap that product dead out your hand. Don't you do it. Okay, let's move on. Number seven, relaxer is for the hair, not for the scalp. So do your best to avoid applying it directly to the scalp. Now I get that while you're smoothing, things like that, some may get on the scalp, but it is never supposed to go directly on the scalp. The whole reason why we base the scalp is to protect it if relaxer gets on there, but it should not be something where we're just saying, why base a scalp? Let me just slap it on there and pull it all the way down. That's a very reckless way to apply. You should also, and I'll say from experience, base the tops of your ears. You wanna make sure you're basing around the nape. You essentially wanna get the entire hairline area, the scalp all throughout the head, not just the four quadrants uh, in there, the whole scalp and the tops of the ears because baby, the skin there is thinner and they burn very quickly. Just be made aware. Number eight, relaxer should not be applied to your edges first. And I get that a lot of people are like, well, that's where my hair gets kinky first. And so I want to make sure to knock that out. I got to make sure that's straight. When I tell you in over 20 years of doing hair professionally, I've never had a client whose hair is more coarse on the edges than it is on the interior. Never. Usually most people have more fine hair around the hairline and it's more coarse within the inside of the hair. Now they might have a coarse section somewhere within the head. It's not necessarily all of this is coarse and all of this is fine, but the exterior portion of the hair, the outer perimeter where the edges are all the way around is usually going to be more fine. As a result, it's going to process quicker. The reason why you are seeing that those edges seem like they are getting kinky quite a bit faster is because number one, they're over processed. So the hair that's not new growth is looking like it's fried because it's really dry. It's lost a good degree of protein and it's over processed. So it's on its way out. The other thing to keep in mind is that if you're still noticing, hey, that's, this hair seems like it's bucking back quite a bit, your hair is probably dry in general. It needs more hydration. So typically, I think a lot of times we will say, I need a chemical when hydration is needed. We need more moisture and more hydration, more water within that hair and more of a sealant on that hair to keep that water in place. And we'll deal with that a little bit more in just a moment. Number nine, don't shampoo your hair for three days prior to getting a relaxer done. And you want to try your best to also avoid scratching the scalp. Reasons why is because most people when they shampoo are going to be scratching, so you're causing abrasions to the scalp. And also when you are shampooing, you're removing natural oils, you're removing the natural barrier that your skin builds. So you're removing a layer of protection for the scalp. So it's not about the hair necessarily being clean, that the hair won't relax well and all that. It'll relax the same either way. But the issue is if the scalp is overly clean or if the scalp has abrasions from you rubbing, scratching, things like that, you're going to see an increased risk of burning. And you also want to make sure that you are not doing a ton of scratching or rubbing, maybe a little light padding, but try your best to avoid scratching in general. If you are one where you've been a style for however long you need to shampoo, then that's fine. Go ahead and shampoo, but then wait three days. If your scalp is itching like crazy after you have shampooed and it's only been three days, there's a good chance that either you're using too hot of water, your scalp is really dry, you have a fungal infection. There can be a number of different things there. I have videos on all of those things, so check those out. But this video is going to be long enough with 25 tips. Okay. Okay. Number 10, your scalp is not an indicator of when the relaxer is done processing. I repeat, relaxer is not for your scalp. Relaxer is intended for use on your hair. So we don't use our scalp as an indicator of when the relaxer is done processing and processing time starts the moment relaxer touches the hair. Usually most relaxers will tell you that 13 to 18 minutes is the maximum amount of time. 13 minutes being the maximum if you have fine hair, 18 minutes being the maximum if you have coarse hair. And I don't mean courses in your hair is really tightly coiled. I mean courses in each individual strand. The trees in your forest are fat trees coarse hair, not the trees in my forest are really circly trees. <laughs> okay, so this is not based on, oh, your hair is type two, type three, type four, any of that type of stuff. And if you come in my commentary with that, even in a joking manner, I'm probably gonna correct you because that type of logic 
causes a lot of people's hair to be overprocessed because they think because I see a tighter curl that this must be coarse hair. And more often than not, extremely coily hair is fine not coarse, especially tightly coiled type 4 hair like 4C, things like that, is going to be much more fine in nature because it is oval in shape, not round in shape. And as a result, because it's oval, it's thinner in the middle and much more prone to issues that you would have with fine hair. It is so crucial, so important, hella important, that when that chemical gets on there, the time starts immediately. And so like if we start back here, we may want to rinse in that order so that way I can get it out in the order that I put it on and allow it to process to whatever intensity it needs to, but we don't want to leave it on past the max processing time. So few people read manufacturer's instructions, and let me tell you, you can tell. It shows, and this is stylist included. You should never be told, okay, let me know when it starts burning and someone starts working on someone else's hair. If they are using the chemical portion of relaxer on you, no one else should be getting any services done while your service is being done. Because by the time they finish smoothing, you are ready to rinse. Remember, we're not working for bone straight. We're relaxing the curl, not removing the curl. Number 11, avoid caffeine prior to relaxing. You want to avoid things like teas, coffee, chocolate, things like that. Keep in mind, caffeine awakens the body. It's opening everything up. And as a result, because it's awakening the body and opening everything up, it's a stimulant to the body. It's going to increase your risk of burning. Don't say I didn't tell you, if you are highly prone to burning and you're walking in with a, a cup of coffee in hand, it's a problem, especially if you're doing the next thing as well, wearing a hat to your appointment. Number, where are we at? Number 12. Don't wear a hat into your appointment. Don't wear a hat before your appointment. Don't. I know your hair is probably not looking the way that you would like for it to look, but tying things onto your head the day of your appointment not only holds in heat, which is gonna cause that relaxer to process faster, uh, which means uh, it's likely going to hold in heat on your head, so it's going to cause that relaxer to move quicker than you need it to, or it's going to cause issues with your scalp itching and or with your scalp burning, things like that. And bear in mind, if that relaxer's on your head and your scalp starts itching, that is the warning sign that that your scalp is about to burn. So if you're wondering what's going on, if you feel that weird itching sensation, your scalp has not been itchy during a relaxer, your scalp is it's already eaten through the barrier cream. It is now dealing with your dermis where the nerve endings are. So it's eaten through barrier cream and it's eaten through epidermis. We're now in the dermis where the nerve endings are. You feeling that itching sensation is the prelude to burning. Don't say I didn't tell you, okay? Don't wear hats. None to your appointments. You don't want them rubbing around certain spaces. You don't want holding in heat in certain spaces. When I tell you, if someone has worn a hat to their appointment, I can immediately tell because that area relaxes like this, okay? The heat is no joke and it will accelerate that chemical. <sighs> Number 13, don't work out before relaxing. This goes back into the same caffeine situation. It awakens the body, it opens everything up. You've been sweating, all of that, and it's going to increase your risk of burning. Number 14. Um, opt for low heat styling options, things like roller sets, twist outs, and braid outs. And for the person who is like, I thought that was for natural hair, you can do twist outs on relaxed hair. I used to do them all the time. It leaves a beautiful wave. It's just not quite as full as it is on natural hair. You can do braid outs on relaxed hair. Keep in mind, majority of people that are getting relaxers are doing it because they are needing something that's going to be quick. They're needing something that's easier for them to manage, but you can still use the exact same methods that you would utilize for natural hair for relaxed hair. Like, I don't know if any of you have seen people with naturally straight hair will braid their hair, go to sleep, wake up, and wear it in the beachy waves and all that type of stuff. It's a braid out. They'll do a rope twist on their hair, which is a slightly different technique than two strand twist, but still the same premise, and take that down and wear it wavy and all that. It's a twist out. It's the exact same thing. Just because you're relaxed doesn't mean that you can't do that. It is not exclusive to natural hair. Mind you that it's still not heat free, but it is a low heat option. If you're sitting under a hooded dryer like this here, the highest that temperature setting, setting should be is high, not perm. Perm is for when that hair is being done with a curly perm or an endothermic perm where you need to go underneath the dryer and accelerate the use of that chemical. It should not be used to dry your hair. It's going to dry your scalp out massively and have you itching like crazy. You need the hydration on your scalp and even though it will dry your hair faster, it's going to have you miserable. The highest you should have it on is high and honestly for most people I use it on medium. Keep in mind there are all other low heat options when you are drying your hair so you could utilize something like the Rev Air. It is a bit pricey, but it is an option. Or if you're going to blow dry, use a low heat blow dryer. Okay. Congrats. Number 15, 
You want to maintain your style by wrapping it at night, putting it in pin curls, braid outs, or twists, things like that, in order to ensure that you're not having to put heat on your hair every single day. No matter what fabric of hair you have, whether it be natural, relaxed, uh, naturally straight, naturally coily, whatever the case may be, you don't want to be applying heat to your hair every single day. You're going to damage your hair, you're going to cause issues with breakage and issues with dryness. And dryness always leads to breakage, breakage always leads to split in. It starts this cyclical nature that's just really not great for the hair. Okay, don't say I didn't tell you because I did. I just did. Number 16, always sleep on satin or silk. The reason why this is is because satin and silk are less absorbent fabrics. They are moisture resistant, not moisture absorbent. I want you to think of it like this. If you made a spill on the floor, would you clean that spill up with cotton or would you clean that spill up with satin or silk? Usually you're gonna clean it up with something that's cotton, a terry cloth towel, something like that. The reason why you would reach for the hand towel or that cotton towel or whatever to clean up a wet spill is because it's absorbent. Cotton is an absorbent fabric. Satin and silk, while they do have an absorbency level to them, they don't absorb near as much moisture, near as much water, near as much hydration as cotton does. So I want you to imagine if you are sleeping on a thirsty fabric, it is robbing your hair of its hydration all night long. If you are sleeping on something like satin or silk, it allows you to have a better experience with that hair and honestly with your skin too if you're using satin sheets as a whole. I get that they can sometimes be harder to sleep in, but a satin pillowcase, a satin bonnet, a satin headscarf, even if you have in braids, they've got the bonnets now where it, it ties around here. It looks like a bonnet up here, but it's got an extended tail on it so all of your braids can fit in. You have so many options now to be able to do that. They even make rollers that are wrapped in satin so if you roll your hair at night, it's still covered in satin. Boo boo. There's no excuse. Okay, not at all. And if you're one of those that falls asleep on the couch, I just go ahead and keep you a satin bonnet by the door. And when you get inside, you can go ahead and just toss that right on. Toss that satin bonnet on there. And that way, when you know it, I, hey, I laid down on the couch and started to watch my show or whatever the case may be and uh, passed out. Y'all know couch pillows are a whole different texture and they will tear some hair up baby. Number 17, I feel like this one's going to come across as a little controversial to some people just again because of class action lawsuits and all that. And I can deal with that a bit more as well, but ask your stylist about mixing Olaplex part one in your relaxer and utilizing Olaplex part two after your relaxer. When I tell you I use it on all of my relaxed clients never had any issues whatsoever. It makes such a significant difference because it's literally building and multiplying ponds while they're being broken. You see significantly healthier hair as you're relaxing and it makes such a massive degree of difference in terms of the overall health of the hair. That's why I recommend it. They know they've had some recent issues with, I think it's their part zero and like part I don't know what the other part is, eight or nine or something like that. I really wish that they would just name them and stop numbering them. But I want to draw your attention to another factor on there that just seems really gimmicky to me. There's a thing swirling the internet saying that essentially they have a class action lawsuit against Olaplex right now uh, for $75,000. Now I'll tell you now, as a beauty professional, $75,000 is such a menial amount of money that it really makes me immediately question the relevance and the uh, authenticity of people's claims because that amount is exceedingly low, especially given the price point for Olaplex. And I'll just leave that there. I can dive into a video on that later, but I'll tell you now as a stylist who has used their product and has used it consistently, and I still use it to this day, I've never once had an issue with Olaplex when used correctly. And a lot of times I think the issue is it gets into the hands of people who either don't read directions, don't know how something should be utilized, or are using it in the manner that they deem fit rather than following manufacturer's instructions. But again, that's for a whole nother video. Number 18, stay on top of your trim. Split ends, they don't go away. They don't just magically disappear. So if you are getting split ends, things like that, and keep in mind your hair has been through a process where it's going to be more prone to dryness. Dryness causes breakage. Breakage leads to split ends. So keeping your hydration levels up is really important. But in ensuring that if you have split ends that you're taking care of them is super important as well because it's going to cause more issues with knotting, more issues with breakage, things like that. And I want you to imagine while we're focusing on hydration, you're using your lines like the Giovanni's Too Chic Ultra Moist line, which mind you, for those that are like, well, I thought this was for natural hair. This is not formulated for natural hair. This is not formulated for curly hair. This is not formulated for relaxed hair. This is formulated for hair that needs hydration. Does relaxed hair need hydration? Absolutely. Do curls need hydration? Absolutely. Does high porosity hair need hydration? Absolutely. Dry hair breaks. So you combat it by utilizing something that is going to give you the hydration that you need. Now keep in mind as well, if you're 
looking at the aspect of things for your low heat styling, things like that. Uh, if you're doing anything where you're sitting under the dryer, roller sets, wet sets, things like that, stay away from a lot of those gels. Opt for foams. Foam wraps are gonna be your best friend. Uh, this one here is by Evan. Professionally, I love Nairobi wrapping foam. It's amazing, but my scalp does not, so I don't keep it on hand anymore. Uh, the Evan one works really well, and it works nicely with my scalp. I don't have any issues with itching with it, um, so that's why I utilize it. My clients don't typically have issues with the Nairobi, but my scalp wants to act a fool and show out. If you're needing a bit more hold, you can use something like the Crazy Sexy Curl from The Dew. If you love The Dew and you don't want this manner of hold, you can also utilize Mousse Def that they make. There are a lot of different styling foams. If you're looking for a hydrating shampoo, you can also use the Tangling Shampoo. Again, a lot of these are listed in my product favorites. I recommend them because they're high quality products that give you the hydration and the moisture that your hair needs in order for it to thrive, regardless of the fabric of hair that you're working with and whether it's chemically altered or not. Number 19, Relaxer and Lightener or bleach are not a good combination. They can exist really well on their own and in the right circumstances, sure, they can exist well together. But more often than not, they don't work well at all. And if you don't believe me, just go search online for girl relaxes bleached hair or guy relaxes bleached hair or person relaxes bleach. I don't care what you type in, relaxes bleached hair. It is like nair. It take that hair off in minutes. You hear me? minutes bleach and relaxer don't mix can it be done successfully under the right stylist with the right products with the use of things like olaplex and understanding of your chemicals and all that absolutely more often than not it doesn't work out in that manner and so i'm not going to give you information based on the exceptions to the rule i'm going to give you the information based on the rule number 20 be gentle with that hair especially when it's wet in hair school they always had a saying hair is at its weakest point when it's wet now with natural hair that's not always the case although i will say wet hair always tells all of the truths that your dry hair lies about. So if your hair needs protein, often you can't tell when that hair is dry, but as soon as you get it wet, if it's feeling stretchy and all that when it's wet, you automatically know we need more protein. So in that instance, yes, it can be more weak when it's wet. And especially if your hair is chemically altered, it is most certainly more weak when it's wet. So utilizing brushes like the wet brush is gonna be really important. It's much more gentle. It has flexible bristles that respond while you are detangling and brushing. And um, let's see, I've got wet brushes linked again with my favorite products in the description box down below. Wet brush looks like this here, comes in a variety of different colors. The bristles are highly responsive. They're very soft and the ball tips on the bristles are small super flexible, great for relaxed hair, great for fine hair, great for hair that's prone to breakage regardless of whether it's straight, curly, whatever the case may be. For thicker hair that is uh, more coarse, you can utilize a Denman paddle brush. I absolutely love these babies. Again, very responsive, small bristles, but the bristles are a little firmer on this one. So for thicker hair or for natural hair, it tends to work a bit better. And then of course, when detangling, you can also use things with a large range of teeth on them, things with a large range of teeth on them, all quality things. While we're on the topic of detangling, that leads me to our next point, point 21, always detangle from the ends and work your way up. Listen to Drake, started from the bottom, now we here. <laughs> we don't wanna be starting up here and trying to rip through hair. All it does is it moves whatever knots you have down and now we have one massive knot here that you have compressed that's gonna make it harder to get that out. You're going to cause breakage brushing from the top and that's with anyone's hair, but especially so in chemically relaxed hair because again, it's more fragile and needs more TLC on a regular basis. Number 22, relaxed hair is high porosity hair. So if you felt like, oh, my hair is low porosity, I need you to understand that even if it was low porosity before, once you have relaxed it, you have increased your porosity. You just put a chemical on there that took your hair up from a natural 4.5 to 5.5 on the pH scale. It blasted it all the way up to 11, 12, sometimes 13 on the pH scale, and then quickly tried to bring it back down when you were done and the hair sustains a good degree of damage throughout that process. As a result, those cuticles don't close back down as tightly as they did before. So whatever your porosity level was prior to relaxing, it's going to be elevated now, which means you need to treat it more like high porosity hair. 23, and we're coming to a close. Lord, this has been a long video. Uh, but number 23, use heat protection preferably something that is alcohol free. Now there are moisturizing alcohols like acetyl alcohol and satyryl alcohol, but you wanna stay away from uh, isopropyl alcohol or SD alcohol in your heat protectants because they're drying ingredients. And again, if you've been on my channel any amount of time, you know dry hair breaks. Your hair's already gonna be more prone to drying out. 
because again, it's heightened porosity. It's been through this chemical process. So you want to ensure that we're not doing anything to add to that dryness on a regular basis, especially if you're then gonna follow up with heat, which is gonna cause some evaporation of hydration off of that hair as well. Number 24, don't be scared of silicones after you have hydrated the hair. I feel like silicones get a horrible rap. Silicones are such high quality ingredients. They're used in most quality heat protectants. They're used in a lot of great detangling products. They're used to help seal in hydration uh, without adding a ton of weight to the hair. But the problem is when people use a silicone like it's a hydrator, it doesn't work that way. So if your hair is dry and you put a silicone on it, it's gonna be shiny and still dry. And it's gonna be brittle and breaking and all that because you can't get hydration in after that because you just put a sealant on the hair. So the best way to use a silicone is to shampoo the hair, condition the hair, put whatever leave-in you wanna put on there, and then you would go in with silicone after you have added in all the measures of hydration you go in with your silicone and seal and use that as your moisturizer. Uh, that's gonna be lighter weight, things like that. By the way, hydration goes within the hair. Moisturizer sit more so on top of the hair. That's for a whole separate video. You wanna use it as your, more towards your final aspects of your products that you're putting on there. It is strictly for sealing and for shine, not for increasing hydration. And if you're still with me, thank you. Thank you. But this last tip is so crucial. It's so important. So I'm so glad that you stayed. Number 25, hair should not be relaxed prior to that person experiencing puberty. And I don't mean like, oh, okay, you started your cycle. Let's relax it the next day. What I am telling you is your hair goes through changes every time your hormones change. Hair that has not yet experienced uh, that hormonal change that comes along with puberty is often very fine. It's very delicate. The skin is very fine and delicate. And if you are applying such a caustic chemical on there, you are quickly going to overprocess the hair. And a lot of times you can do more damage to the scalp, more damage to the hair than that little person can potentially stand. I will say, please don't be in a rush to put such a chemical on your child's hair. I would highly encourage you to watch some of my videos on learning how to twist and care for their hair while it's in its natural state, while they're younger and all that, and allow them to have some say in the decision, understanding that it's gonna come with an increased level of care that's needed. It's going to come with you needing to follow these other 24 tips I've given in this video. It's, it's necessary. So I want to ensure that you have that piece. Tuck it in your belt. Tuck it wherever you need. Put it in your purse. <laughs> put it wherever you need to put it. But please do not go relaxing little people's hair prior to them even going through that hormonal change, you're asking for their hair to break off. Uh, and keep in mind, children's skin is so much more sensitive. Damage that is done to the scalp is often irreversible when it results in scar tissue because hair cannot grow through scar tissue. And children are incredibly sensitive. They cannot handle things that tingle. Usually for little children, I have seen things like tea tree that feels calming and cooling and all that to the rest of us be so intense that they are literally screaming. It is too much for tea tree shampoo or something that has menthol in it to go on their scalp, much less something that is highly caustic and uh, starts a chemical burn. If you've ever had a chemical burn, you know you can rinse all day. The burning does not stop from there. It takes so much time for that burning to stop. If you get nothing else from this video, I can say, you know what, if you tear up your own hair, that's your hair, that's fine. But give your baby a fighting chance and give them an ability to have a healthy scalp and healthy hair and delay that decision if you plan on making that decision or if your family has consulted and plans on making that decision. Most quality stylists that are concerned about healthy hair and a healthy client are not going to relax a child's hair. I don't care how many boxes you see with a child's face on the box, it is not a gentler relaxer. It is the exact same thing with a child's face on the box. It just has cute writing. Read the warnings. It's the exact same warnings. Read the chemical components. It's the exact same chemical. It's the exact same intensity. It has just been marketed because people want it and not everything that is out on the market is good for your hair. I hope that this how long video has been highly informative to you and I hope that it's been extremely beneficial, especially if you have relaxed hair, if you're considering relaxing, if you know someone in your family that's relaxed or if you were thinking about relaxing your little person's hair, I will ask now that if you're still here and you are natural, things like that, please don't leave hate comments for those that choose to go for relaxers in the comments. Everyone does it for different reasons. It's not always rooted in self-hate. I know that that's something that has become widely pushed, but just because you enjoy your natural journey doesn't mean you gotta tear up someone else's journey, okay? I love you. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Until next time, you guys, take care. God bless and stay glam. You know I love you, boo. 
and I hope this video helped. If you're not subscribed, why aren't you subscribed? Okay, bye.